Okay, so the problem I want to do with you is I want to think about is the square root of pi irrational? So you remember pi, the circumference of a circle is just pi times its diameter. Uh, so pi, you learned is something like 3.14, or you may know it, it continues to go on, it's irrational. So it's, pi is 3.14159265358979, and on and on, 32384626433832795028, so on and on and on it goes. Okay, so this is pi, an irrational number, but the question we're asking is, when we take its square root, is it still irrational, or does it suddenly become rational? And so to think about this, let's remember what it means to be rational. So we'll say some number a is rational if there exist some integers, m and n, such that a equals m divided by n. Here's our symbolic notation. There exist integers m and n such that a equals m divided by n. And so that's what it means for a number to be rational. For example, 2.5 is a rational number because 2.5 can be written as 5 divided by 2. There are integers 5 and 2, so that 2.5 is 5 divided by 2. Okay, very good. What does it mean to be irrational then? Well, to be irrational just means that you're not rational. So you're just negating the statement. And so how do you negate this existence quantifier? Well, we said that you negate an existence quantifier, we turn it into the universal quantifier that's for all m and n. So that's for any integers you might pick. It is not the case that a is equal to m over n. That's precisely what we mean when we say pi is irrational. We can't find any integers so that it comes out to be that integer over that one. Um, there are some that are close, like pi is pretty close to 22 over 7, but, but it's not quite 22 over 7. So 22 over 20, 7 are close to pi, but not quite. That's what it means for pi to be irrational. So, so let's think about the square root of pi now. How might you show that the square root of pi is irrational? Uh, so one thing you might try to do is you might think, well, somehow the square root of pi being irrational is related to the fact that pi is irrational. So how might we relate these? Uh, maybe, maybe you have a proposition that looks something like this. Proposition. You might think that if a is irrational, then you want to conclude that the square root of A is irrational as well. It seems like a reasonable proposition. So let's think about how we can, uh, how we might go about proving this. Uh, first of all, we can uh, express this symbolically. If A is irrational, we can say that's proposition uh, P, and that implies proposition Q, the square root of A is irrational. Now just looking at this, I, I don't have a good instinct of how I would prove this. You know, it's like A is irrational. I can't write it as, as a fraction. It goes on forever. Okay, but how do I know then the square root of that thing is also irrational? You know, you take the square root of a number that goes on forever, it should go on for, it's not exactly clear how you do this. But, you might remember that the statement P implies Q is equivalent to its contrapositive. The contrapositive being not Q implies not P. So this is saying, if P is true, then Q is true. What does that mean? That means that if Q is not true, then it couldn't have been the case that P is true. Why not? Because if P had been true, then Q would have had to be true. So the statement P implies Q is equivalent to the statement not Q implies not P. And you can see this with truth tables or however you want to convince yourself that these two are equivalent statements. 
So that means instead of proving this proposition, we can prove what I'll call proposition prime. That is, we're going to prove the contrapositive of the proposition if not q. So the opposite of q. q being the square root of a is irrational. So not q is the square root of a is not irrational. That is, the square root of a is rational. If the square root of a is rational, then that's not q, then not p. p is the square root of a is irrational. So not p is then a is not irrational. a is rational. Then a is rational. So this is what we need to prove. But look, at this is now something we can work with. So, so how, how can we get some, some traction on this? Well, look, what does it mean for the square root of a to be rational? Well, let me make one last edit. Instead of calling this the square root of a, that seems a little bit messy. I'm going to call this just b. So I'm just going to say, if b is rational, then, well, what would a be? If b is the square root of a, then we have b squared is rational. So make a small change there. And let's try and prove this now. So here's our proof. What are we given? B is rational. So suppose you have some rational number B. Then by definition, we said you're rational if you can find some integers that you can express it as. So then B can be expressed as the quotient of m and n for some integers m and n. But if b is m over n, what does it tell about b squared? Well, then b squared would be m over n squared, which is m squared over n squared, which is a quotient between two integers. Hence, b squared is irrational, completing the proof as desired. So we can put ourselves a little, a little proof box right there. So we've shown that if b is rational, then b squared must be rational as well. That is, if the square root of a is rational, then a must be rational as well. Hence, if a is irrational, the, the contrapositive, the square root of a must be irrational. And hence, since we know pi is irrational, the square root of pi is also irrational. Therefore, we've shown the square root of pi is irrational. That is, assuming we take for granted that pi itself is irrational. Now, you might be wondering at this point, well, how do we actually know that pi is irrational? How do we know this doesn't stop at some point? That there isn't some fraction to express pi as? That's a much better story, much longer story, and we'll have to do that one another time. Yeah.